Hey friend, it's your girl, Kimberly Nicole Smith, and this is Art, Artist, and Action. This is where conscious creators connect. At every session, my best friend and partner in crime, L.C. Walter, chops it up with the dopest people we know. The creators he connects with reflect on their life, lessons, thought, and legacy. This special episode is presented by the University of Florida College of the Arts and the University of Florida Center for Arts in Medicine. So today, we dig into anti-racism. On this episode, we look at Demonize, a song by Johnny P featuring SP Truth, AKA O. And today, Elsie Walter chats with the artists about the song and their reflection on the hypocrisy they as black men experience in our country. The conversation starts at the origin of their realization of the power of words and rhyme, then takes us to an audacious call to action in part two of this episode. So let's get it cracking. Go ahead and get this thing cracking. Oh, give us a little bit about your background. Where are you from? All right, so I was, um, <clears throat> excuse me, originally born in Brooklyn. Um, and I moved to Tampa around 95, and I've been here ever since. So Brooklyn born, actually lived in Canada for a while as well too, um, but then the main part of my life has always been here in Tampa, Florida. All right, that's um, nice. yeah. <laughs> yep. Johnny, what about you, man? We've, what's your background? Where you from? I'm from Tampa. Uh, been here since I was one, born overseas. My dad was in the, in the Air Force, but... Uh, yeah, I'm a Tampa boy through and through. All right. So I don't say I don't say uh, bike though. Everybody always asks me why I don't say bike instead of back. If you know anything about Tampa, but yeah. <laughs> I got you. I got you. No, I just recently found out we all got a a, a good um, intersection. Everybody's a part of the Great Gator Nation, so that's what's up. Oh, absolutely. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. So my favorite question that always get these things started is. When did you tap into your creativity? Um, that may make a difference between your answer this first, but when did you tap into your creativity? Like, what is that thing that made you tap into the way you like to be creative? That goes back to, and, I, and I'm wondering if, if Johnny gonna do the same, say the same thing, but seems like for a lot of folks who rap, it goes back to the almighty table in high school. And, <laughs> you know, it's the it's the freestyle sessions. It's the guy who can make the beats on the table and such. What happened with myself was up until that point, I was just a fan of rap. I didn't know I could until that day. It was a what most people know as the cypher that was taking place. I was kind of pushed to the forefront like, yo, we know you could do something. You feel me? And. I just began freestyling and lo and behold, them words, the words just came and it was sticking, sticking, sticking people. Oh, oh, wow, snap, the usual, you know? And so it was just, that's what started for me. Like, oh, okay, not only can I do this, but I'm good at it and people respond. So at a place in my life where I felt like, I don't know what outlet I got right now for my expressions with some of the things I was dealing with, that was one of those, you know, it sounds like the after school special thing, but that really was one of those things where it's like, I got hip hop. So let's ride this wave and let's see what happens. Facts, facts. My, mine is very similar. Mine is actually a little different, but but similar. Mine started off with, uh, you know, we played the dozens roasting, chewing on each other. You know what I'm saying? So I actually was doing that first. If you know anything about Riverview High School, uh, oh, it was sure. bad. Oh yeah, it was bad. There was a couple of dudes out there, they would make you cry. You know, so they come, they would check your tags every morning to see if your shirt was fake. You know what I'm saying? It was bad, you get roasted every day. So it started with me having to defend myself against some of these guys were roasting. And then like, oh Sam, it kind of transitioned to the rap. So you had the rap crowd who was freestyling or whatever. And I laughed a little too hard one day. And whoever was rapping turned, actually it was my homeboy Giz, we, we became cool. He turned at me and started, you know, throwing bars my way. So I was like, oh, snap. And then same thing. I just started, you know, chewing, you know, chewing on them, roasting them, but rhyming at the same time. And then that's how I found out I could rap like that. I was like, okay. And then ever since then, it was 
you know, I was that guy, you know what I mean? That's flat out organic. I mean, I love it, especially because coming up, you know, if somebody come at you, you can't be that dude to just back down. Like, right. I, that's just guy code. We already know what that is, right? Yeah. But um, it, it's interesting that y'all say it that way because you know my my love for 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 words and everything is very similar to that. But how did you guys know that you had the words? Like, you had the wherewithal to be like, "Yo, I can put these things together." Like, what was that thing? Was it did you have a connection and love affair with the words, or was it just something that you just heard? So, how did that happen? That's that's a good question. That's, yeah, isn't it though? That isn't was so, yeah. <laughs> isn't it though? I'm saying, like, isn't isn't it though? I mean, I, I think <laughs> I think it definitely became a love affair. I think it was just something that you know what I'm saying. I, I mean, like a fee. I don't want to say like a female, but you know, like a like a woman that you date, you try it out at first, and then you know those feelings grow. And you know, I began to love her. You know what I'm saying? But uh, originally, it was just it was just something you know to try out. Oh, I'm kind of good at this. It might be, you know, people got basketball, football, whatever. I'm kind of good at this. And it just developed. And, and you know, I realized I really had, had a real knack for it, you know. For me, it was just um, coming up as a fan, listening to everybody. True. You know what I'm saying? So kind of like how you were, Walter. Um, I'm fascinated with, I was already fascinated with the words as a kid. Right. You know, how, how folks should just do that. You know what I'm saying? How time rhyme mind chime all that they could put it together and just keep that thing flowing and i think what got me was it makes sense you know it just wasn't rhyming for the sake of rhyming type of thing so until like i said so for me it was just more of the shock of oh snap i can do it too you know what i'm saying it was almost like I, it was like watching all, like he said with basketball you watch everybody else around you crossing over dunking catching out the oops and stuff and you're so busy watching it and then one day somebody put the rock in your hand and you're just like, oh, well, I remember this. And then I remember the crossover. And then before you know it, you done broke somebody's ankles and you above the rim. You know what I'm saying? So that's kind of what it was for me. It was like always the fascination up until the realization that I was a part of the same thing I was fascinated by. I think what's dope is you actually just broke that analogy down exactly the same way. Like you <laughs> just being a wordsmith with it on that end. So you know, <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. So from battle rapping, moving forward, you know, just being a part of decipher and freestyling, when did you know, or what did you realize that your words could connect a little bit deeper? Like, not just for the sake of doing it, but like, yo, there's a message we could put out beside behind this. Like, so when did that, when did that take, take shape for you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna let you go first on this. You sure? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. All right, I'm, I'm a, I'll go, I'll go because, okay, okay. So, so to be perfectly honest, there was probably nothing positive about my music until, <laughs> until uh, Back. shoot, probably, <laughs> man, uh, probably mid twenties, mid twenties. Um, I, I mean, I knew I could affect people because I knew how, how deep I could cut people with stuff that I was saying, because like me, I, you know, I, I, when I grow up, when I grew up, I had a, you know, I still down with my group, you know, city squad. Um, we were going through real things in the streets and we were talking about these things. Like we, we would fight people and then go right to the studio to rap about how we beat them up and stuff. You know what I'm saying? So wow. I, I, I knew, I knew how those people felt when they heard it. Cause I would hear the talk and when they saw us and how it made them feel. So I knew I could affect them, but it took me maturing to realize that I could take that same energy and affect people in a positive way. Oh, I love that, love that. I'd say the same thing. Um, very, very, very vicious back in the days with the things that I would say. Um, it was, like Johnny said, I, I cut your soul in a song. Like I would <laughs> <laughs> reach in and it. <clears throat> for me, the biggest thing that made me even think twice I uh, made a song with an old friend of mine. And I mean, I went ham on women in this song. I'm talking about, you know, I didn't have to necessarily use the degrading words per se, but when I put it together, you know, you still sliced them and had them feeling like less than. My mom. Oh, snap. Mm. Said, <laughs> my mom said, whoa, that's you? And I was like, yeah, 
you know, and she was like, love the talent, but man, you're angry. <laughs> she's angry with the melody. angry. The music is nice, but I know you're not going to sing that song. You know what I'm saying? And it was like, and you got to understand, well, you don't know me that deep, but my mom hated rap. You know me? To, 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 to my mom, rap was just a bunch of noise, you know what I'm saying, or whatever like that. So in one hand, it was like, she acknowledges, oh, snap, my son can do this. But then also let me know she's paying attention into the words because she actually had feedback based on the actual song. You feel me? And I was just like, huh. And I would always have people kind of tell me like, yo, oh, that song was dope, but bruh, you good? You know what I mean? Because it was always from this place of just right. anger. You know what I'm saying? So kind of like what Johnny said, I knew I could impact you. You feel me? But the, the concept of a message, I ain't think about that. Because back then it was just, this how I feel. This is how I think. And y'all going to take it exactly the way I want y'all to take it. And I didn't care how you felt. It wasn't until about right before I graduated um, and I got asked to do a song and they were kind of like, could you tone it down just a little bit on certain things? And when it came out, I was like, oh, <laughs> this must be what people were talking about. <laughs> got it. <laughs> I mean, and you got to think about it. The fact that you actually had your mom, you know, pivot and be like, yo, my kid is connected to this. I, I got to actually, because moms want to support, right? And then, yeah. at the end of yeah. that, you, you know, go back and look at <clears throat> the letter while this or a fanny Shakur, like, you know, they knew their kids was doing stuff and saying stuff, but the reality is they know their kid was trying to do something else and tell a story. And I love the part about how your mom was like, yo, I'm hearing you. And I think that's one of the things that sometimes we miss about, you know, our young, our youth nowadays when they say they want to be hip hop, they want to do this and that third. And they do exactly what y'all said. You know, we go back and we look at it. And until somebody who makes a difference in your world, you know, gives you that feedback that you respect, it's like, yo, there, there it is. So, um, so, <clears throat> So the pivot point on that right there is, so y'all think about message music. I think we all grew up at, some, at a point in time where you heard message music, right? Mm -hmm. And um, you go back, you think about songs like uh, what self-destruction and we all in the same game. Yo, tell right. me about y'all thoughts on those right there because I want to definitely like reach into that to get where y'all went. So talk to me about y'all thought about message music like that. Bruh, I know that whole song from top to bottom. Um, I think we all old enough to remember the box. Oh. And <laughs> that, that, for however long it was, that song was always playing on the box. And I would make it home in time to just sit there and listen to that. That was like, as far as the, the, the message message, that was the very first song I was like, and I, I it's to this day, anybody's verse comes on i'm running through it so when i saw that you picked that song i was like yo he, he go back he go back like so for me that was like wow songs like that you know um especially since cool modi was on it and he was one of my influences as well too you know what i'm saying so yeah, i was like right. right you know <laughs> this this was before how you like me now you know what I mean? exactly, <laughs> and, all exactly, yeah. and all that it was just like that was always a reminder to me like kind of like okay um this is what rap sounds like when everybody kind of gets together and has a main goal and for this time of life of course it was making sure we don't you know take each other out and fall into that pit so that song was crazy big for me crazy big it was always kind of like in the back of my mind like I wanted to do I always thought I wanted to do a self-destruction type of song or whatever like that you know but of course, in the heydays, I, I don't think I could find 10 people positive enough <laughs> to, yeah, yeah, to rock, to to rock something like that, you know. you know what I'm saying? So I'd have to like switch my voices in each verse and <laughs> make y'all think 10 people are rapping. <laughs> gotcha, but yeah, gotcha. that, that, that song has always, that's always been, of all the songs about upliftment and such, that was the one from my childhood that made me say, okay, uh, uh, that thing does exist, so. For, I think for me, when you talk about, you know, this type of, these type of music, um, my, my two favorite artists, as far as rap goes, are, are Tupac and Nas. So I, I think as, you know, I started to mature, you know, me personally, I was, I, I started to gravitate more towards the Brenda's Got a Baby from the Hit Em Up 
you know, I was fr from all that young rage. I, I don't know why we're so angry when we're young, but but uh, <laughs> just from identifying with that rage to identifying with with the more positive things that he spoke. But uh, that, that's kind of where I draw like my passion from right now. Uh, it, you know, other than the fact that I kind of I kind of take a lot from those from those those guys those those legends. You know, I got I got uh, a daughter and another one on the way. So, you know, when I look at the world and I, and I think about the things are, I might listen to an old song. I can't imagine my, like my daughter listening to that, you know, some of the stuff that I was saying about maybe about women or mm -hmm. whatever. So now I'm more conscious about how, you know, black women are projected and whatnot in, in our music and stuff. And that's kind of my driving force. Like when I go, I want to leave music, you know, saying out here, because now it's out here forever. You put it on title, Spotify, whatever, it's out there forever. When I'm dead and gone, you know, I want her to be able to, you know, click the play button and hear her daddy, you know, dropping jewels to her. So that's kind of what motivates me. And that's that good legacy building. That's that's my tagline right there. That's a good legacy building. And I think because you guys are in that space to pay homage, and you, you said it best, Johnny, like, yo, when I'm gone, that song's going to live forever. Like, and you think about it when, you know, we was a kid, you know, you turn on some two live crew and you like, yeah, 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 yeah. You turn on some BBD and you're like, do me that. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Hold up. Was I actually singing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. So, you know, you fast forward, you think about what we are now, especially as men of color, you know, we, we having families, you know, being a part of a union and, and, yo, know, you want to bring up a seed and you look and you say, that's the message. So, like, shout out to y'all for that right there. So, um, fast forward into y'all track, and you know, just like speaking on that right there, there was a there's a couple lines. I mean, um, and uh, to our audience, when y'all hear it, y'all are going to love this track right here. So, uh, can y'all give us a little bit of information about where the the information, not the information, but the inspiration for Demonize? Like, where did that come from? Because when I first heard just a couple of of, of just the, the chords coming out, I'm like, all right, all right. And then I'm hearing the bass and all of a sudden, boom, demon. I'm like, what? Hold up. So what was the inspiration behind that? Like, that was live. Come on, John. Okay, so, yeah. Yeah, uh, so, you know, just to keep it all the way real, I'll say between Barack Obama and Donald Trump, there's a lot of things that, that drove me to to kind of put that together but I noticed so for we're, we're talking about racism so I'm just going to keep it real I watched I watched Barack Obama you know I'm not even big in politics but I, wa I watched this guy you know this man for eight years just be ridiculed him his whole family his wife you know called racial slurs just just unfair treatment I mean he was he was, he was talked about for wearing a, a bike helmet on a bike, you know what I'm saying? For wearing a tan suit, things like that. And then I watch Donald Trump and he's seeing people that hated Barack Obama. They love Donald Trump. And I was saying, thinking about it one day, I was like, yo, I said, every negative stereotype about black men, they say they hate. Obama was none of them. And Donald Trump is all of them. Wow. And I was sitting there thinking about how crazy that I was like that the only the it's so evident that you hate this man because of his skin tone. Because you 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 say that we have multiple baby mamas, we have foul mouths, all these things they say about black men. It was true about this white man, but they loved him, but they hated the upstanding black man. So I just saw how all, everything was reversed, and I was like, damn, these are devils, bro. These are devils. And that's how, and I was like, demonized, demonized. It just, it just clicked, and I was like, boom, there it is. And I just started writing from that perspective. Mm. What if black women were good mothers and white women were twerkers and Mexicans were lazy, white men were hard workers? If I told you that you did eighty percent of the killings but excluded my murder of natives and slaves in the millions, what if I strung you up in trees, made your children bleed, raped your woman as pleased? This is prophecy. Fed your babies to alligators and sat back in silence. Then turned around and told you we show people this violence. If I worked you all day, whipping you, no rest, freed you, but 
got sick dogs on you when you protest. protest. Gentrified your neighborhoods, where you going? No guess. Give no you syphilis, watch you die, bitch, that ain't no test. Uh-huh. I confess I think it's war time. War I nuke civilians in cities, but had the gall to charge other nations with war crimes. Uh-huh. Since birth, my people have been demonized. demonized. How could I be anything but evil viewed through a demon's eyes? Huh. You devil. Damn devil. Demonized, I've been demonized. I must look real evil in a demon's eyes. Demonized, yeah, I've been demonized. I must look real evil through a demon's eyes. Oh, I've been demonized. I've been demonized. I must look real evil through a demon's eyes. Demonized, yeah, I've been demonized. I must look real evil in a demon's eyes. What if I told you you were labeled three fifths of a human and anybody with one drop of your blood is included despite oppression? You built yourself a wealthy city that I burnt it to the ground. No remorse or pity. What if education was only reserved for black skin and whites needed a quota and trial to crack in? Then black sheets and black hoods formed an enemy to protect and uphold the black supremacy. So now white communities are over flooded with drugs. Aryan nation and hell's angels. White on white thugs. The worst jobs, the worst food, worse health care. Black police brutality. You ain't safe nowhere. And don't you dare complain because everybody is equal. Slavery is over white folks. What's so wrong with you people? You know the deal. Strap up your boots and work hard. And since blacks don't see color, don't even play that card. See, this is my problem. It's the bullshit that they tell you and you believe that shit. They'll tell you that majority of the, of the murders come from us. But when you look at that statistic, it started in the 80s after they dropped crack in the hood. They conveniently forget about all the lynches and shit, all the slave riders, millions. We could never catch that by the count. Yeah, I've been demonized. Lying, you devil. Fuck you. Demonized. I've been demonized. I must look real evil in a demon's eyes. Demonized. Yeah, I've been demonized. I must look real evil through a demon's eyes. Oh, I've been demonized. I've been demonized. I must look real evil through a demon's eyes. Demonized. Yeah, I've been demonized. I must look real evil in a demon's eyes. Oh, can you speak to me about like when you were doing this track? why the role reversal was so important to be, you know, pushed to the forefront? Um, <clears throat> well, part of it was the genius of Johnny in the first verse. This and, guy, this guy. You know what I'm saying? No, I mean, like straight up, when he, he had, when he said, yo, you know, he's very direct. Yo, I got this track, oh, you need to be on it. Five minutes later, instrumentals in my email. And I'm, <laughs> that's just how he is. And I'm listening to his first verse and I'm just like, and all he tells me is I got a concept for the track. I'm sure you'll get it. Like he gave me nothing. He's just like, I got this concept. You'll get it. And I was like, all right, you feel me? So I'm listening. To, right. Yeah. And I'm listening to him and I'm just like, okay, I see what he's doing here. And I was like, he, he's, he's very good at, captivating the, the of highlighting the main points of what we as black people go through so when the opening line comes in what if and i hear the switch i said okay i know exactly where he's going with this one and then i'm listening to it and i'm listening to it and he does a phenomenal culmination to paint the overall picture of what you know we as blacks go through and what life would actually look like if we roll reversed mm-hmm. so i said okay the only way I can, the only way to even do this thing justice is to take the same perspective and then kind of be like the continuation in between. Because what you see in his verses, you see the the treatment from the slavery days and then also the treatment for today's time. So I said, okay, let me be what's in the middle. And so that's why I did the middle. And if you notice, I'll go over, you know, Black Wall Street, I'll go over, you know, civil rights, I'll go over education and things like that. So for me, it was like, all right, he he gave me and he gave good room in the middle for me to kind of carry this thing on. And I was like, well, okay, if you're if we're going to do that, and you have the systemic issues and things covered, well, let's give a chronological to go with it as well, too. Let's 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 dig in deeper. And expose this thing on an even deeper level to let it be understood that even if the whipping and the protesting and that isn't enough for you let's just take a look at history altogether. and so I covered the nonviolent things that happened on purpose to make sure that I show this isn't just us talking about one and other no this is history 
So basically for me, it was like, he set the tone for me to be able to cover the entire history. How did I do it in 16 bars? Don't ask me, but it was uh, like, <laughs> you know, it, it was just, it was, it was the way he set it up. You know what I'm saying? It was like, just to use the basketball terminology, he lobbed it up there for me. And I was just like, you got to slam this. So that's the best way I felt like I could slam it. So for me, it was just important to hit that role reversal because it was a continuation. He gave you the attitude and the outward right hatred. I wanted to get into your mindset to help you understand that everything he said came from a poisonous mindset. So let's cover the history of that poisonous mindset and let's wow. see what happens. Yo, fellas, uh, that's that's storytelling at its finest, easily storytelling at its finest. And especially because when the climate that we are now with this new regime change, um, <clears throat> since they still certify and everything. And hopefully by the time this uh, podcast hits the airwaves, you know, we'll be done with all of that. You know, we got a new year coming up as well. How do you think this track can actually, you know, pave the way for those youth that we actually are trying to, you know, get to listen to message music now? I mean, yeah, you know, we can we can bop with the baby, you know, we got Megan the Stallion with her hot girl summers and everything, and they still they telling those stories. How do we pass the baton of the storytelling that y'all are wanting to get to the youth now? Like, what do you think that that's gonna take? Like, how can we get there with the messages y'all trying to drop? I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, this type of music is not promoted, so they it has to be. They have to they have to want to find this type of music because it's not going to be promoted because the 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 agenda is to destroy us. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like you're gonna keep getting Megan the Stallion, and you know you know we grew up on Lauren, with Lauren Hill. I, I, it's hard for me to listen to a you know Megan the Stallion. I mean she's got some good tracks and everything, but. I can't listen to that all day, but it, I, I already know that, you know what I'm saying, this is an uphill battle as far as music like this. Only a couple get in, you know, at a time and, and it is what it is, you know what I'm saying? I, I personally just make the music, uh, I, I told I told the Most High a long, long time ago, is like, if, if I make music and I can touch just one person, you know, saying that my job was complete. So that's that's just kind of how I look at it. But as far as me hoping that the masses are going to gravitate towards something like this, it, it's just not conducive to what's going on in the world. You know, I I, I don't expect it. I would love it, but I, I don't think I'm naive to, to the fact that uh, this is not what is considered cool or even what the higher powers want to be heard on a large scale. What? This is everything. Yo, that song was so dope and the conversation is everything. Man, we are so grateful for what the College of the Arts and the Center for Arts and Medicine is doing to elevate the conversation and the work happening at the intersection of arts, culture, and social justice. Man, don't forget to like this episode and subscribe to the channel. Come on, let's just jump back into the conversation. I got you. I got you. It's that machine. It's that machine. And I think um, that <clears throat> it goes into what you were saying earlier, especially it is actually latent in the track. Like you got to think about it. If I can have somebody continue to look at you in that particular way, they're still controlling the narrative. And I love how you guys are trying to chop away at that narrative to give people background and feedback on it. And I think that right there in and of itself, um, not only is it commendable, but that's exactly the energy that we need. I mean, commercialization is connected to capitalism. Capitalism is connected inextricably with racism. And right. I think, you know, from an anti-racist view, being able to point it out so we can actually see what it looks like um, is, is spot on to what y'all deal with the track. So, you know, big out kudos to that. Hey, so, I, got a, I got a whole album of this coming out though, so. <laughs> oh, speak to that, speak to that. Tell us about it, man. Oh, no, just, it's just a, now, this is not a shameless plug. I'm just saying, like, Are you like you're, you're, <laughs> <laughs> this is not a shameless plug. I'm just well listen. timed. Well timed. <laughs> you see, you see, I'm just letting you know. It's funny because you're like, um, you're like, what did you say? You're like, uh, oh, I was just like, wow, when I heard, it, I was like, I was like, man, I got some stuff on that joke, and it's gonna make it gonna make your jaw drop because we got a joint called Uncle Tom. Woo. 
Wow. No holes bar on that one, but but uh yeah, no, this is this is a whole a whole project. It's very, it's very, it's got a dead prez feel. Mm -hmm. Um that's what I've been oh, kind of wow. doing with my last projects. Um, like the one right before this, it was called Amali. It was like totally geared towards my daughter, giving her jewels. So the whole album is like I'm talking to her. Nice. So this one is just this one is very pro-black. There's a track uh, called uh, Keep Your Head Up, which is uh, just talking to our sisters, you know what I'm saying? Telling them, you know, just apologizing for one, two, telling them that they're beautiful, that we love them. It's just, it's just, it's just that type of vibe that, that, I'm, that, I'm, that I'm putting out with this one. So uh, nice, nice. Uh, it's needed. I mean, cause yeah. you know, again, we're, we're trying to create those healthy spaces. We're trying to talk about placemaking. And at the end of the day, one of the biggest things that we can do is find more avenues, um, regardless of, you know, since we ain't got Sam Goody, we ain't got Radio Shack, we ain't got, you know, Music Plus, we ain't got, you know, the version. You went back, ah, Sam you Goody. Know, I'm going back, you know, with it. And there's a spot and we have places and spaces That's like buying. this. Yeah. Uh, you see what I'm saying, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we got places and spaces like this that we create and, um, they can live on, like you said, like you're trying to pass on these messages. So that's what's up. That's definitely what's needed. So um, only a couple more questions and we get y'all off this wonderful hot seat. And I appreciate y'all and everything like that. Um, and this is a, a, a big thing about moving forward. Like what's next, you know, when it comes to the common thoughts of how your storytelling and creating a space for racism or anti-racism to be um, pushed out, you know, what's next for you guys in that space? Hmm. Shameless plug time, I guess. No, um, <laughs> <laughs> I know for me, one of the biggest things that I'm working on right now is a, um, a project of my own personal self-healing where I cover a lot of different things in my life vantage point of black men and some of that does involve a lot of the um, you know things that i've endured in terms of like racism and things like that as well too um just to like go back just for a second um throw my two cents in on something really quickly um funny thing with hip-hop has always been the balance and i always felt like in this generation there's no balance you know, it's, it's like what Johnny said, not being promoted and such. In our heyday, you know, L, L Hill would get the same amount of view time as Kim. You know what right. I'm saying? And, and Floetry would get the same amount as, say, Fox. And this and Eve would get the same amount as Trina. It was like, it was always enough to where you had the best of both worlds, so nothing was lost. Right. I'm not in ear tuned enough with today's sound to know who is the balance for the Megs and for the Cardis. And you know what I'm saying? I don't know, even on the male side, who is the brother other than Kendrick? <laughs> if that's Kendrick the last Cole. thing, KK and Cole, you know what I'm saying? Like those two would be the ones that I would hang on to just for the sake of some kind of rap that's remnant of what I, you know what I'm saying, grew up on whatever like that. So I think a lot of times it's like the balance, but in order for it to get balanced like that, you gotta have that ear that understands that that needs to be out there. So it's like Johnny said, folks gotta wanna, like people who have that power have to wanna hear something like this. If, if they don't wanna hear it, then like Johnny said, it's gonna be hard to get it to that, that to break the wave, so to speak, and get it to where everybody else can hear it. So like my curiosity always been, who are these ARs and who are these producers and who are these folks in this generation now that kind of wanna open up their right ear too? and be like well hold on that's it has its place you know what i'm saying or whatever like that because i mean we're honest brothers um i love most deaf i love talib Kweli, but if i go to the club i don't want to hear that i would want to yeah. hear big pimp and throw your hands up and all that stuff right, that, right, right, that right, does right. that you understand what i'm saying but, but when i'm in my car i don't want to hear that i want to hear you know what i'm saying umi says and this fat you know what i'm saying and things like that so it's like who are the a and r's and the producers that have the pull to get this music there. And if they know they have the pull, are they doing it or are they just, my think my conflict is, are you are you there and just blatantly neglecting this thing because you wanna make your pockets fat? Or are you trying to tell me that there's nobody in the industry right now 
that can't appreciate messages like what Johnny and myself do. Nobody. I find well, that well, tough he, to believe. Well, the, real quick. Oh, the thing. The thing is, is that the whole game has changed. And, and if you remember when we was coming up, it was taboo to sound like somebody else. Yeah. Now that's the method. That's the that's um, the formula. Oh, yeah. you, you sound like Migos. Let's go. You sound. Right. You know what I'm saying. So, so it's, it's a little different. So how would you do a how would you do a pro black song sounding like me? <laughs> the flag would, and the protest, I, the burner, <laughs> especially because they do their own sound effects. It's not the fist and the power. No, no. no. And, the protest, the burner. No, I mean, absolutely. Not. Soon, but it's like wow, you know. <laughs> That would make the struggle sound so comical, bro. You'd be like, no, I don't want to live. <laughs> Put your fist down. <laughs> no, that's, that's, that's funny. Uh, but you're right. I think <clears throat> looking at the gatekeepers, looking at the ones who are the ones who put it out there, the A&R guys, you know, like if, if we don't have, like, you know, back in the day, I used to laugh about it. You know, it used to be heavy rotation. Like they would put a song in heavy rotation. Now it feels like this only rotation, like like right. you're going to only get this in rotation. So I'm like, Damn. right, right, right. So, like, yeah, we have to infiltrate those spaces, but at the end of the day, we we have opportunity. I think the majority of the times we have opportunity to infiltrate and create platforms. <laughs> so not losing sight of what that looks like is is going to be huge because we don't want we don't want good brothers like y'all to be like, yo, it's never going to go out. So you know, much appreciation to y'all for saying, nah, I have this and it's, it's in the works and it's coming. I have this right. in the works and it's coming. Right. So, I mean, let's speak to that part right there. The independent folks, like, do you think that there's enough independents or independent people in the space, whereas that movement could tip the scales back to balance? I mean, can we treat hip hop like it's the Thanos, you know, bringing balance back? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um yeah it's possible <clears throat> it's just not probable mm. not to bring it back not to bring it back to where we came from like right, right, right. I, I you know i you know i grew up off the wu-tang and fuji's you know saying like that i don't think it's ever going to get back to that right. like we you see some sparks of light um uh, you have a couple young dudes come out and, and really spit, and then you'll have some of the old heads drop, like Buster Rhymes just dropped a fire album, you know. But to get back to to where where we were, it just I think it's just gone too far. Like you hear a lot of rappers say, we went from you know talking about slanging drugs to being the users. It's just mm -hmm. it's just the mindset of a lot of these kids when you talk to them. It, it's so far gone. Mm -hmm. it, it it's not even. You know, you know what has to happen? It's not even the music. There's, there's, gotta, there's gotta be a lot of healing internally from our people to where we can even digest and even create that music. Because mm, okay. the, the, these kids, you know what I'm saying? You see what's going on in Chicago? Like that, that's wild. Like we knew about Tupac and Biggie. These kids killing each other like every day. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's just a little different, you know? Yeah. So um, there's gotta be a lot of healing to, to get back to where we was at. And I think, and I think also to piggyback off that, recognizing the formula of hip hop and what hip hop was was meant for, which was mm. to s spread that message. Like it's so funny. I think about how some of these younger ones rap now. Um, we can all attest. As much as our favorites talked about their life in terms of the drugs, the gangs, the women's, and all that stuff, you always knew there was a sense of yo. I want to do better than this, but since this is all I know, this is all I'm gonna. This is all I can give you. I think a formula that was once meant to escape the foolishness has now been used to market and enhance the foolishness. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? And you know, um, I think that's. I think that's a big part of it as well too. The formula to success is simple. You want to make a hit record, talk about killing somebody, talk about slanging somebody or disrespect the women of your kind. And you might just make it to the top. You saw and the Lazy Bone video? Bruh, that was crazy. That was crazy. Wow. That was crazy. But it's like- So I don't know, T tell, ahead, tell, uh, tell them- No, 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 bust it down, break no, it down. Talking. Uh, no, 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 I, so, I can forfeit. So Lazy, man, 
This ain't FSU. You ain't forfeit. Anyway. Oh, <laughs> that's fire. So, you so want to do much, it now? <laughs> <laughs> so pretty much Lazy Bone. Was it Lazy Bone? It was crazy. It was one of them. It was, it was crazy. crazy. It was Crazy Bone. It was Crazy Bone. He was talking about um, about somebody he knew in the industry that was telling him about a, a meeting that took place where pretty much where the, where the heads of the, of the record labels was pretty much all in a room and they were telling them that, yo, we're about to invest in private prisons. This was back in the eight when, when they started, you know, really pushing gangster rap. Right. Back in the, back in the days. So they were saying, yeah, pretty much we're finna, we're about to go from, you know, um, you know, poor righteous teachers and, and uh, leaders of the new school, leaders of the new school. We're about to transition that to this because this is going to make us money in the private prison sector. So he was just talking about how all, all of this, what we're seeing now was, was, was a plan back then to, to help keep us, you know, in a, in a, in a, you know, the state that we're in, you know, so yeah. you, you hear about that, that impact. Yeah, you hear about the, you, you hear about the rappers who didn't comply, you know what I'm saying? And he, even when they, even when they tell their story, they still don't even make reference to it. I think crazy was one of the few people that will say the key words to let you understand that it was a business decision by higher powers while everybody else just would refer to them as those people or them or mm. they or whatever like that. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, it's always been a plot and it's, it's funny that black artists were a part of a plot or used as a plot to destroy their own communities, even through one of our more powerful outlets of upliftment. So it's, it's, it's ridiculous. Turning it back on them. I mean, and I, you know, just thinking about that, you talk about, you know, and it happens in education, you know, you, you, you move things around just so you can, you know, play the shell game. And what's funny about it is I think a lot of times they're trying to push this dollar and it's not, a, they don't recognize how their words and what they do and what they glorify um, affects the well-being of the mm -hmm. young folk, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to think about it from that that lens of it. You know, how can hip hop, since it's sadly to say, you know, it's turned into this age in a space of hurt, how can what you guys do now affect positively affect the well-being of those folks that you can try to permeate through the vibe, you know, through the space and infiltrate that mindset? Like, what do you speak to that right there? Well, that's that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. Let me tell you something. It's it's not even. You, you hear black people say it all the time, and it's and it's true. Being black is exhausting. You know what I'm saying? It's exhausting. I, I'm a, I'm gonna keep it real. Just just yesterday and today, this is my experience because it ain't just it ain't just us against us. It's us against everybody. It's us mm. against everybody. And and sometimes we'll hear crazy stuff from from other races, uh, primarily. You know you know. Caucasians and they'll try to make it like it's all the same we're on the same playing field and oh we're all just it's not man like my daughter's three years old right and she goes to a, a Christian uh, church school and she comes home and she says she's looking at um, the little uh, I got like a little black statue out there she says oh their skin is dirty right Whoa. Now she say, she's saying this because white kids around her, and this is a Christian school, they're saying that brown skin, and oh, your skin's dirty. You know what I'm saying? So, so already at three years old, I'm having to combat, you know, negative, negative stereotypes and negative, you know, imagery in my three-year-old's mind who I, who I can tell doesn't even really understand what she's saying. Wow. You know what I mean? So now yeah. I'm trying to tell her, uh, 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 <clears throat> And that's and that's even past the fact that she comes home with pictures of uh, 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 Caesar Borgia is like, oh, this is God. I'm like, no, baby. They're telling you that's who Jesus is, but he don't even look like that. You know what I'm saying? So I'm constantly, yeah. Yeah. I'm constantly trying, having to retrain my child out of a white society. So, yeah. so, so I'm combating that with my music. I'm combating the negativity in our in our communities that was molded by these same white people in my music so so my for me personally and i'm gonna let O get to this because i know i'll be talking a lot me personally my music is All meant right. to make you feel uncomfortable i want you to feel uncomfortable as hell when you listen to my stuff wow i want you to i want you to feel like the black family that, that you know back in the day that that you said you can't live in this community i want you to feel like that when you listen to my music and i think, and I think for me 
it's a, it's funny. It, it's a one two combination because then I'm the one who comes in after that. And I'm like, now take a look at everything that this man has said. Now what you gonna do? That's kind of like me. Um, uh, I guess you would say if we were, if it was a, if it was a, if it was two brothers in the same house, he's the brother that'll beat you down, and I'm the brother that told you why you got beat down, and now gave you a chance to get back up and do something different. You feel me? Um, so my music has always been a matter of here's the facts, here's how I feel, here's how I lay it out. Relate to it and do better after. You know what I'm saying? Just relate to it and do better is my biggest thing. I want you uncomfortable too, but I want you uncomfortable on a, on a personal level to where you have no choice but to change your thinking. That's what I want. I I want to destroy the mindset. Um, the hardest thing for me is, yeah, that's that's how I am. I want the mindset to be destroyed, straight up. The heart and the mindset of it to be destroyed. The one thing that I had to be at peace with, though, is I might not be around to see the fruition. And that's probably used to be my biggest frustration. Mm. Like, I want to see it when it happens. And I've come to that realization that just like anything else in life, sometimes you're not going to see the change until long after you've planted the seed. And some seeds are going to come up that you're not even going to know about. Like, you know what I'm saying? It, it, it's, it's just one of those things for me at that point now. But while I'm alive... You know what I'm saying? I, I'm I'm old enough. I'm old enough to know how to fight, but I'm young enough to keep fighting. So it's like while I'm alive, you keep dropping as many seeds and dropping it as you can, and you just you believe and know that eventually somebody's gonna look at that plant and say, "Yo, let's water this one." You know what I'm saying? And if everybody waters their own plant positively and in the right state of thinking and feeling then here comes you know the metaphor here comes the here comes the forest but the forest now isn't filled with nonsense and bs it's just organic gifting talents and healthy emotions and healthy thoughts that says you know we can coexist and i'm not talking about other races i'm talking about black folks listen i'm not the whole hands let freedom ring kind of a brother i'm really not feel me i'm not I don't believe in the kumbaya. We don't always have to get along. We don't have to hold hands and sing each other, but you will respect me mm. and you will respect what I'm doing. Right. And if you can't do that, we've got a problem. And I mean that even within my own black community, my brother, I love my black men. Does that mean I have to be best friends with every single one of you? No, but I will respect you for who you are as a man and what you do. And you're going to give me that same respect in return. And as long as we can do that, we good. That's what's up. That's what's up. Well, fellas, um, last thoughts real quick. Um, uh, it's number one, general appreciation for what y'all bring to the table, especially because this is the type of energy we want to definitely move and push people push out there. We're going to live in some uncomfortable times and some uncomfortable spaces and places, but the challenge that we all have is the one that you guys are trying to meet head on. So, uh, any last thoughts that you guys want to glean to us? Anything you want us to tell us about the projects and stuff y'all got coming up? You can go ahead and name drop. You can go ahead and do all the shameless plugging you want to as we close this thing out. Now. Oh, well, I, my project uh, coming out, I feel like I keep pushing it back because I keep adding tracks or whatever, but uh, it's called <laughs> Valley of the Dry Bones. You know what I'm saying? Real significant, you know, title to that, Valley of the Dry Bones. It's, it's a joint project with my homeboy, uh, Main Cuzzo Main from the Villains. Uh, we got uh, one psych on there from Tampa. Uh, we got uh, Cum Laude on there from Tampa. O obviously on there. Um, it, it's pretty much a Tampa-based project, but uh, like I said, it's it's really it's really giving you that dead press feel. We come in, we we talking to the brothers and sisters out there, real positive. So just be on the lookout for that. Um, right now, that's all. That's all I got in the works, other than. Uh, I'm ki- I kind of started another City Squad project, which is my group. Mm-hmm. Um, my homeboy Noel uh, got a project he's working on right now. Um, and also Racks and Roses, uh, which is uh, uh, other squad members, um, Racked Up Slim. And um, uh, so that's pretty much it right there. 
What about you, O? Um, for me, it's I'm gonna do the hardest thing I've ever done in my life in music, and I'm gonna I'm gonna give you one more. And I've never done that before. Ooh. I've been I've been so good at giving you the truth, guy, and, and just the bars and the bars and the bars and the bars. Um, <laughs> this one here is called Reflections of the Broken Mirror. And basically Ooh. all I'm doing is I'm taking the trip inside and I'm going to cover, uncover and recover all the areas of damage in me. Um, and it's it's taking a standpoint from like, the dude on his knees and basically looking up and like, yo, I got to address some things. So I don't know when it's going to drop because I just started writing, you know what I'm saying? Whatever. So, but it's personal. It's, it's, it's weird because it'll be the first time I ever take that personal of a route with it. Cause I'm usually not the type to go in that deep with it, but I can't say I want to see people heal the communities heal if I don't do the same thing with it myself. Feel me? Wow, so, like, that's a big statement. The album would then be called The Misunderstanding of the Hypocrite. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, it's personal. I'm going to address some very deep personal issues of my own. And we'll see what happens from there. Then, once I get that out of my system, maybe I'll jump on a couple of Johnny's tracks. You know what I'm saying? All right. Oh, yeah, the nasty <laughs> truth. The nasty <laughs> truth. We got to do it. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> That's the is all get out. Gotta love that, right? You, you know what? You know what's so funny? People don't know that this friendship is through hip hop. <laughs> we yeah. met on wow. we met on the UF campus, literally coming in with the reputation as Tampa's probably two best rappers. <laughs> and wow. that could do a whole nother, that could be a whole nother podcast of all that stuff we went through. <laughs> but, <laughs> But yeah, so it's, 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 it's great to see just how we both come to the point of a song like this. Because I remember I was busting out laughing too because we was like, yo, if they heard anything we had did <laughs> in undergrad, oh, yeah. there would be no podcast. <laughs> right, right, right. They would be like, these guys aren't about building. <laughs> 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 no, nah, the, the maturation, the maturation yeah. section. So, yeah. you know, if, if folks want to um, get in touch with y'all, how do we get in touch with y'all? You have to email me. Um. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> you know, like, remember, we're trying to. This is, this is the same. As, no, like I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm keeping it. I'm keeping it a thousand. I'm, I'm not on Facebook. <laughs> I'm not. On, I'm on serious social media hiatus right now. This is a part of my cleanup process. You know what I'm saying? And, All right. Maybe once that gets done, I can, but there's two ways that, you know, you can get at me. If you want to get at me through the regular email, it's my first name, Omar, middle initial S, last name, Pasley at um, Gmail. If you're strictly interested in the artist part, then it would be sptruthbars at gmail.com. Other than that, you better network your way through somebody who know me and hope you can get my phone number. <laughs> yes, yes. That's that catharsis coming out. What about you, Johnny? How we get in touch with you, man? So I'm I'm on I'm on Instagram at City Squad ENT. Um Facebook, Johnny Peter Dex. Yeah, sound crazy. That's P D A D E X. And then um you can email me at City Squad <laughs> Entertainment. Yes, yeah. Yeah, because I know your last name, name. and I know your last name. That's why. That's why. (laughs) And then uh, the email city squad entertainment at gmail.com. All right, fellas. Thank y'all. It's been a pleasure. Hold on, hold on. Sorry. Hold on. Johnny, say it again. I don't know if our laughing actually overtook what you said. So let me just. Oh, uh, oh, oh, yeah. Do that. Email city squad entertainment at gmail.com. And hit me up. I'm, I'm streaming on all platforms, you know, Spotify. Title, Amazon, all of that. Johnny P, check out my stuff. Is is you gonna like it? All right, all right, gentlemen. We appreciate you. That is definitely a wrap, uh, artist. Thanks for hanging with us at Art, Artist, and Action, a Tenacious Rose Studios production. We hope you continue to elevate your consciousness, explore radical creativity be an audacious visionary, and use tenacity to change the world. Until next time, this is Kimberly Nicole Smith from the Tenacious Rose Project. And don't forget to like this episode and subscribe to the channel. Check out the link in the subscription below to learn more about the arts response to anti-racism. 
It's a public repository, so you get to add examples of artists and work you know that are consciously creating in this space too. See you next time.